All right, so uh, we are starting a uh, sample problem using group data, and we're going to we're going to use this data co to compute a grouped mean, um, and come up with other measures of central tendency. Along the way, we're going to learn what these measures of central tendency are. So we have a problem here saying a local gas station recorded 100 purchases of fuel one late afternoon. The dollar values were sorted from smallest to largest. So here they are. They're nicely sorted for you. And uh, if you're using a spreadsheet, you don't. the sorting doesn't really matter. It uh, doesn't really make a difference. Um, It's usually, it usually makes a difference if you're trying to do the problem by hand. Because as you can see, if you're, if you're doing the problem by hand, you don't have to pick out the smallest and the largest numbers to compute your range. Uh, you could find the middle value of a, of a list of numbers, and so on. Okay, And these are the things that we're trying to find. The bin, the subinterval, the median, the mode, uh, the interquartile range, and the semi-interquartile range and the grouped sample mean. Um, some of these things, I mean, all of these things can be done using a spreadsheet, but a lot of them can be done by sitting down with a sheet of paper and just inspecting the list that you have and doing a few simple calculations. These are not a big deal. Um, but we are going to learn how to do a grouped uh, data mean uh, using a spreadsheet and uh, at the same time learn how to use a spreadsheet. Okay, so I've set up a table here. The range here is really the largest number minus the smallest number, which was 149 minus 5. The bin width is this number divided by 5, right? N1 divided by 5. I've already done these calculations. And I've set up a table for the low number, the high number, and the midpoint. And if you recall, and, and the frequency, and if you recall in the last video um, how we got them, and how we got low and high and everything. We're going to repeat this all over again now. And this last uh, one is actually quite, that's new. And this last column is going to be used to compute the, um, the grouped data mean. And we're going, to we're going to compare this because the grouped data mean is really nothing more than just a, um, an estimation of the mean like the true mean, the arithmetic mean. Um, and we can, because we have a spreadsheet, we can actually compute the arithmetic mean quite easily using yet another formula. So we can actually check our answer and see how close uh, our group data agrees with the true sample mean or the not, I mean, the true mean is like the population mean. What I really mean is the, the arithmetic mean of our sample, okay? That's really what I mean. Okay, so the low is 5, the lowest data, and then to the 5, to that 5, we add um, this bin width, right? And uh, that's an absolute cell reference, so I'm going to type F4 to get those dollar signs there. And notice that this subrange goes from 5 to 33.8. We can average these two numbers too. So, and that's done by adding that number to that number and dividing by two. And so you get this. I am going to, um, oh, hold on. Um, this is going to be equal sign, uh, equal sign this number, and that's all that's needed because that becomes a low. Notice that all of these numbers are integers. So the fact that these are decimals just means that, okay, we're just demarcating the border lines between the intervals and the fact that we have these um, decimals uh, won't hurt our data when we're counting, right, when we're counting the frequencies. So um, to the 33.8, we, um, we add that bin width again, and we're going to hit F4. F4 is what I, the key I have to give me that dollar sign n dollar sign two although I could type this in using just a keyboard and it's the same thing it's the same difference we get the same thing all over again notice the spreadsheet does the same thing we compute the midpoint and I'm just going to copy the formula doing this 
And now if you thought that was lazy, I'm going to get really lazy and I am going to come up with all of those. And notice that I'm going all the way to 149. I started at 5, I go to 149, and that's exactly where the data is going. No problem. These are all the midpoints for those subranges. And now we're going to count the frequencies. The frequencies of how often data occur between here and here. All right, so we go count if. Um, and then we give the cell range. And we just do it by just dragging our mouse over the table. And then we just say less than and then ampersand because basically the less than occurs in quotation marks making it a string. The ampersand joins that string to a number and in a, in a way that doesn't cause problems for the computer because quite often strings and numbers don't get along too well uh, in computer programming. So we're going to take this number as our upper limit and there we go. We have 12 numbers and let's, let's check that. So we want numbers going as low as 33.8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We're going to 33.8. Notice the next data point goes to 36. So 33, 33 is the only thing less than 33.8. We got 10 numbers going down this way. And we go 11 and then 12 and you can see this number is correct. Okay, so no problem. Now let's do the next interval, equals count if, and then open a bracket, high, uh, oh, sorry, my bad, don't mean to do that. We've got to do our cell range first, okay, let's do that, and then comma, and then our less than, uh, ampersand, and 48 point whatever, no, no, 62.6, my bad, okay, i looking at the wrong column. And then I take away the 12. I take away the number before it. If you remember in the last video, to avoid double counting and you only want to count the numbers in the bin, you have to always subtract the numbers in the previous bins. And that will always give you the correct number. Let's check this. Going between 33.8, well, 33, point, 33 is too low. 36 is good. So this is like eight numbers here. And we're going all the way to 48.2. So we go to here because 51 is too high. So to the 8, I add 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Uh, oh, I'm going to 62.6. I'm sorry. Man, I don't know why I'm looking at 48.2. I'm going to 62.6, which means I'm stopping here. That means, uh, that means this whole column is included. And starting from 33.8, this is included. So we got 10 here. Sorry, we got 8 here, then we got another 10 to make 18, and then we're stopping at 62.6, which means 4 more, 18 and 4 make 22. So this number looks right. I'm just going to trust it for now, and at the end I'm just going to check my frequencies, and hopefully it'll add up to 100, and if it adds up to 100, uh, I have that extra bit of encouragement telling me I did the right thing. All right, so now... Um, this is going, now I'm going to do the same thing again, equal sign count if, almost the same thing. Select the table, less than, ampersand, and then that high end of the bin. Then we take away the two numbers. We take away 22, and then we take away 12, right? We take away the numbers in the previous bin, and there we go. We got 21 for that one. And let's do this again. So count if, count if, um, once again, that whole thing. You can just count these by hand. But you know what? If the numbers were mixed up, how much harder would it be to do this? This would be a lot more difficult to do it by hand. This one, yeah, you could get away with doing it by hand. You know, count one, two, three, and yeah, yeah, you, you'd get it. I mean, but... This is, uh, this is actually, you know, uh, less than and, oh, sorry, that's, not, that's an ampersand. And then the high number, 120.2, and, oh, sorry, we don't need a semicolon. Uh, we forgot something. Didn't we forget something? We got to take away the previous bins. So take away that, take away that, take away that. So... 
There we go, 25. That's a heck of a lot better than 80. That definitely wouldn't have added to 100. Finally, the last bin. Um, count if. Um, same thing again. Comma. And then less than or equal to, because this number is a whole number now. And 149 is in the data, so we got to say equal to, because we want that last data point to be counted. And so we go ampersand uh, the 149. And then take away all those other numbers. So take away that, take away that, take away that, take away that. And we got it. So if we now make this the sum, this number will be what? Okay, equal sign, sum, open bracket, all this stuff, close bracket, and yay, we got 100. Look at that. Okay, so there we go. So the sum is 100. That means the sum, well, this is like n equals, right? n. This is like the data size. We, are, we were already given that the data size is 100 in the problem, in the original problem. If we go back here, we set, it said that a local gas station recorded 100 purchases of fuel. So, yeah, that should have been 100, and it would have been easy to check because it's 10 rows and 10 columns. It would have been easy to check. Now we have MIFI, and down here we have the sum of MIFI. We're going to have to compute these numbers and then add them. Well, how do you compute them? It's MI times FI, meaning that it's this, it's all the numbers in this column times all the numbers in this column. So away we go. So this times, and multiplication is shift eight, times this. There we go. So that's our first one. And we can actually copy these values down all the way down to here. Uh, oh, oops. Didn't mean to do that. Okay. As you can see, these are big numbers. And we need the sum, the sum of these numbers, which is an even bigger number. Um, Okay, so then the sum of those numbers is 8,247.2. And then the average, or the grouped average, I should say the grouped, grouped mean. The grouped mean is really this number divided by this number, right? It's really the what is purportedly the sum of all the data it's not really because, first of all, it contains a decimal and none of the numbers in the original data contain decimals. That's right off the top. But um, we're hoping that the group data mean will actually be a close estimate of what the actual mean is. So let's just take it, let's just take it uh, in hand. All right. Um, so then we take this number and we... Now for division, we have a forward slash and we divide by that. And so 82.47 is roughly the group mean. And we can make it bold and maybe give it a color like red or something. Okay, so the group mean is 82.472. But the, um, the arithmetic mean, which is what you would get if you added each and every one of these numbers and divided by 100, which is the, the old-fashioned way of doing it, uh, which is a lot more work and a lot more tedious and error-prone. Uh, well, for a spreadsheet, it's not a big deal. So we go sum, and whatever the sum of this is. Actually, we got a better way of doing this. We don't have to do a sum this way. We just do, um, there's a formula called average. And... We can just do this right away. So how good is this average? We get exactly 82, which is kind of weird. Um, you would expect to see a decimal after, but then, you know, you're, what do you do? You get a whole number, you divide by 100, and that's what you get. But notice how close these are together. They're not too bad for all the rounding we did. And then, as I said, I was pretending that each of these numbers occurred th this many times. In other words, I was ignoring all of the data here and only concentrating on these five values, pretending, of course, that 
uh, those were the um, those were the data points that occurred respectively 12 times, 22 times, 21 times, and so on. Um, so it actually turns out that it's not a bad estimate. You're not that far off. Um, and so the group data mean is quite useful, especially when doing things by hand. Uh, I'm going to be asking you to do it using a spreadsheet, but you can also do it by hand too. If you don't feel confident with spreadsheets, it's not that big a deal to do. Uh, because the group data mean really is just um, what is it? I mean, if you got if you got something like this, the group data mean would be something like um, here. Let's just do a let's just do a formula. Um, in fact, where's the equation editor? Okay, so let's just pin that. Uh, I'm looking for bar x. Uh, okay, so I, I got an x here, but I want an x with a bar over it. So then. Boy, that takes a while to fill. Okay. X bar equals, uh-oh, I don't want that. Equals, okay, there we go. X bar equals, really, sum of MIFI over sum of FI. That's really what we want. Um, so let's introduce a fraction, and it's this kind of a fraction. And that top fraction will have a summation. So, um, so this is the sum of the midpoints. Oh. Divided by the sum of the frequencies. So once again, the sum of the frequencies. where the sum of the frequencies really is just equal to um, the number of data in the whole data set. Okay? That's really all it is. And, you know, you could... This is not hard to do by hand. Um, but of course, um, you know, you got a spreadsheet so you can use that. We're going to be uh, using the spreadsheet uh, a fair bit. So this is actually, for one thing, hopefully not a hard, this won't be a hard lesson for you or a hard assignment for you because you can always check your answer by hand or you can check your answer in many other ways. Um, so, you know, there's that. Um, now, uh, there was other things we wanted to do. Um, what about this other stuff, the median? What's the median? The median is the middle value. Now, if you were a... Um, if you were a, um, uh, a student doing this by hand, you would count over to the 50th data point. You would notice that the numbers are increasing going from up to down in each column. So if you go over to the 50th data point, you reach 80. Now, if you're really astute, if you go to the 50th data point going backwards in decreasing order, you don't go to 80. You go to 85. That's your 50th data point there. And this is a problem encountered when the sample size is an even number and 100 is an even number. Like if you have four data points, you can, well, think four divided by two is is two, so if you count two this way, you end up here, but if you count two this way, you end up here. You end up in a different place. So what do you do? You actually average the two middle values. So then I got 80 plus 85. Well, halfway between 80 and 85 uh, is 82.5. Well, there is a spreadsheet function called median. In case uh, this data is not in order, and you would just specify the, the entire cell range and it would figure out the same answer that you just did without knowing the spreadsheet function. Now, there is other things too. The mode, the most frequently occurring value. That's a little harder to figure out because then you'd have to analyze and tally up which gas purchase occurred most often. There's another way to answer it as well. 
you can actually look at the uh, grouped mean table and notice that the cell, the, the subrange with the greatest frequency is 25. So your midpoint is 105.8. And you could say from a group data perspective that your uh, mode is 105.8, that mo more people bought on average that um, volume of gas than any other volume of gas or that many dollars of gas. Well, let's do this using a spreadsheet function. So mode, open bracket, and then let's just select all this, close, and notice $39 is the most frequent gas purchase. It wasn't even close to what I thought. So three people purchased $39 worth of gas, and it appears that that occurs more often, but I can see 105 also occurs three times just by inspection. So really, there's more than one mode. Now, there's only allowed to be a single median. There is only one middle value in a distribution when you arrange them in numerical order. But what about the mode? The most frequently occurring value, well, you could have a tie between two or more values, which is fine. There is allowed to be more than one mode in a distribution. You can have it. But you're not allowed to have more than one median. You're not allowed to have more than one average, which kind of makes sense. The mode, though, remembers the most frequently occurring, and all the spreadsheet did was give me the first value it found. It ignored this value here, 105. There might be others that I'm missing. But you can see, I mean, that the 105 caught my eye right away. So the mode is 39, but I also see that 105 was there as well with the same frequency. All right, now uh, what about the first and third quartiles? Remember that the median is also equal to Q2, is also equal to quartile Q2, the second quartile. But what about the first quartile, Q1, and the third quartile, Q3? Well, we can do this. Now, basically, the idea is we can split, basically, by finding the median, we split our list into two sections of 50. Remember that 50 is also an even number, which means that if we count 25 in one direction to find the middle of that half of the list, yes, we've, we're a quarter of the way, and that's our first quartile. Not exactly, though. We'd have to count the other way to check to see if we come up with the same number going in the other direction. So we go 10, 20, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We end up with 47. Now, if we go the other way, 10, 20, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, we end up with 51. Well, halfway befo between 47 and 51, what is it? Well, I can go equal sign 47 plus 51, close bracket, divided by 2. Uh, we get 49. That makes sense. Well, why, why don't we use a formula? Quartile open bracket and we're just actually hold on we yeah we do specify the entire cell range but then we have to specify also which quartile are we talking about and it's the first quartile oh why does it come up with 50 isn't that the okay i don't know that that doesn't sound right at all a1 to j10 and i want the first quartile you know what let's just eliminate that I want to see quartile value to specify the specific quartile of a data set. Now, why don't we? Oh, maybe it's dot inc value to the nearest specific quartile of a data set. What, what about exc? What is that? Specific quartile of a data set exclusive of zero and four. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what that is. I mean, the traditional quartile is just doing exactly what I just said. I got 49. I don't know why 50 would have been um, 50 would have been specified, but um, dot inc. How about that? How about we do that? Um, cell range, and then comma one, and I still get 50. Um, 
Yeah. Okay. Maybe maybe I'm a little off. Maybe my my count is a little off. It could it could very well be. So we'll go with fifty, I guess. Um, okay. For third quartile, we're just going to use the quartile for the cell range, and then we specify the third quartile, and we get 115. And notice that uh, it occurs twice. Uh, it, you probably are able to get it in both directions. So that's uh, that's the third quartile. Now, um, what what else do we need? The interquartile range. The interquartile range, the IQR, is really, I mean, the range, remember, was the um, was the difference between the first and last data. But for the interquartile range, it's the difference between Q3 and Q1. So equal sign, this, subtract this, okay? And that's your interquartile range. Your semi-interquartile range, which was the other thing we were supposed to find, is just the IQR divided by 2. So equals that divided by 2, and there you go. So these are... Now the interquartile range is basically the two limitation, the two limiting values which contain in between them half of your data. 50% of your data occur between 100, sorry, between 50 and 115. 50% of your data. 50% of the people attending the gas station bought between $50 worth of gas and 115. Those are their purchases for 50% of the people. 25% of the people bought less than $50 uh, dollars worth of gas. But half the people spent between $50 and $115. And of course, a quarter of the people uh, spent more than $115. Okay, so the interquartile range means that the spread, the difference between the first and the third quartile is $65. And halfway between is, you know, um, half of that difference is the semi-interquartile -inter range. And of course we also did the group sample mean. So this is pretty much all of the things that come into this come into this thing. And of course in section 2.5 um, there is a rather exhaustive description of these same terminologies and issues. So please also use your textbook and uh, look at your definitions, follow the examples, and ask your questions on the timeline or send me, you know, or uh, send me an email. All right, good luck.